Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlord and we're bringing you another troop video. This one is going to be top six best spearmen in the game. So much like my infantry video, this one will be foot-based uh, melee combat, but these ones specialize in uh, using spears. Obviously most have secondary weapons, but again, the spear is going to be the primary factor in this one. So much like the other videos, this is going to take many things into account. Primarily their key stats, their equipment, their armor, uh, etc. You know, just, and if there's a tiebreaker, I ran a bunch of battles and saw, you know, which one did better overall consistently. So it's a pretty accurate ranking system. So we're going to start out with number six. So at number six, we have the Sturgeon Shock Troops. Now these are a pretty fun unit to use and, uh, despite being a little goofy looking in my opinion, but, uh, as you can see, they have a nice big round shield, which is pretty common for Sturgeon, a, uh, one-handed weapon, but it's got some extra room on there. So it's, you know, Pretty cool weapon. Uh, nice long spear. They have decent chest armor, not a whole lot going on the shoulder range, legs, you know, so they're decently light armored. Uh, good head protection, though. So let's check them out in the troop tree. So the Sturgeon Shock Troop is the far left if you follow down through the upgrade path. So yeah, Warrior, Soldier, Spearman, Shock Troop. So uh, key stats for the Sturgeon Shock Troop are one-handed of 100, pole arm of 100, and athletics of 100, giving it a balanced average troop rating, or ATR, of 100. So let's see these bad boys in combat. So, here they are laid out before us. Uh, pretty consistent. Now you'll see some variation in the shield there. We have some with the great big round shields, some with kite shields, but either way it offers decent protection. Uh, let's just Let's just let them do what it is they do. All right, so there we go. That was number six. Let's move on to number five. So at number five, we have the Azurai Veteran Infantry. And you can see this is a decently lightly armored troop, which is pretty common for the Spearmen. Uh, there are a few a advantages here, however. So you can see primary weapon. We have a nice long slashing sword. We've got that uh, custom or that common shield that the Azurai often have. Uh, we are offset by having a decent amount of weapons here. So they do have some throwing javelins and a long pole arm, which is, you know, Makes sense considering they're spearmen. And decently heavy armor for the most part. So let's check them out in the troop tree. So the Azurai Veteran Infantry are over in the Tribesmen tree. So you go down through the Footmen, Infantry, Veteran Infantry. So key stats here are going to be one-handed of 130, pole arm of 130, throwing of 60, which is an advantage in their part, and athletics of 130, giving them an average troop rating, or ATR, of 112.5. So yeah, let's just see how they do in combat. So you can see them lined up here. Their first instinct is, of course, to pull out their throwing weapon, which makes perfect sense. They also have, uh, as you can see, I'm pretty sure that's the long hewing spear, which is one of the best one-handed uh, pole arms in the game. Charge! So let's just let them do what they do. So as you can see, they make pretty short work of looters. I mean, that's not all that complicated, but uh, their initial charge is going to be that, that, you know, they're going to throw javelins, then they're going to break down into different uh, levels. The ones in the back, as you saw, pulled out their spears and started using them, and then, of course, up front, we had the rest of them using their swords. So uh, pretty versatile spearmen. Uh, definitely a good troop to have in the game. Uh, more of a jack-of-all-trades, you know. They, yeah, they're spearmen, but they also function pretty well as close-quarters infantry and uh, decently short-range skirmishers. So uh, that's number five, the Azurai Veteran Infantry. Let's move on to number four. So at number four, we have one of the cooler-looking troops in the game, the Kuzait Darkan. And so you can see this one has nice, heavy armor just consistently around. I mean, boots are pretty light, but that makes sense for uh, people of this step. We have a scimitar, I believe, so a nice slashing weapon there, a small round shield, which is common. Some more javelins, much like the last troops, making them very versatile. Good, nice, long pole arm, and uh, very, very cool-looking and protective helmet there. So let's see what they look like in the troop tree. So you can see the Darkon is a far right troop, so it goes from the footmen to the spearmen, spear infantry, and the Darkon being the best uh, one that they have in their standard tree. So key stats for the Darkon are going to be one-handed of 130, pole arm of 130, throwing of 60, and athletics of 130, giving this one an average troop rating of 112.5. So that's the same average troop rating as the Azurai Veteran Infantry, but here we have an armor advantage. Uh, a significant armor advantage. In fact, these guys are actually pretty dang hard to kill. So let's just see what they are like in combat. So we've got them all lined up here. Nice open field, so this should be nice and fun. Of course, they're going off against uh, decently uh, 
stronger army than usual, but as you can see, much like the last ones, they immediately pull out their javelins. So you can tell they're going to start by skirmishing. Give them hell! Uh, well, I mean, they would if I didn't tell them to charge immediately, but... So, yeah, let's just watch how they do this. So, as you can see, uh, they make pretty short work of even a decent-sized group. I believe that was Mountain Bandits, so... If you've played the game much, you know, they're actually a decently strong opponent. Uh, but the Darkon, like I said, they've got that nice heavy armor, a good variety of strong weapons, and high skill levels, which makes them just a really great spearman. Uh, so yeah, that is number four. Let's move on to number three. So at number three, we have the Batanian Trained Spearman. Uh, so as you can see here, they've got uh, some of the best chest armor in the game. That's the uh, Rangers, I believe, chest armor is what that's called. But it's, it's very good armor. Uh, they have a nice long uh, back sword, I believe is what that is. Uh, one of the better shields in the game. So the uh, I believe that's the decorated or reinforced oval shield. Very strong, very durable, gives good body protection. Nice long spear, one of the best helmets in the game. So they're just a very well-equipped troop. So let's see what they look like in the troop tree. So you can see this one's far left, so you go Batanian Clan Warrior, Batanian Trained Warrior, Batanian Picked Warrior, and then Batanian Trained Spearman. So the key stats for the Trained Spearman are going to be one-handed of 130, polearm of 130, and athletics of 80, giving it an average troop rating or ATR of 113, placing it just slightly above the last two. Uh, but I definitely like these ones a lot, so let's see what they look like in combat. So you can see our formation here, nice and tight. Uh, definitely look pretty cool. A little out of place in the uh, dunes of the desert. But let's just watch them do what it is they do. Attack! Alright. So I do believe that is the Batanian Trained Spearmans at number 3. So let's move on to number 2. So at number two, we have the Vlandian Pikemen, and as you can see, these ones are decently armored. So we've got that full head protection that you only see in Vlandians, including a full face mask, which is excellent. Uh, heavy mail armor, including uh, reinforced mittens. A one-handed sword, but it uh, looks more like a bastard sword because, you know, it's got a lot of hilt size there. Long shafted lance makes it real good for cavalry defense, you know, and any other use for them. So let's check them out in the troop tree. So, you can see they come down from the footman over to the spearman tree. So, when it comes to the billman, you can either go with the Vogier or the pikeman. And now, the there's arguments to be made for either or, and I went back and forth. But in the end, I decided the pikeman has better armor. And this is one of those ones where I just ran a whole bunch of battles using one of each type. And the pikeman more often defeated the enemy without any losses or with very low losses. So they're definitely a real good heavy infantry spearman troop. So key stats for the Vlandian pikemen are one-handed of 80, two-handed of 130, because they sometimes have either or, pole arm of 130, and athletics of 130, giving them an ATR or average troop rating of 117.5. So, you know, starting to get up there a little bit higher. These are all pretty close together, but this one is starting to show a bit of an edge. Uh, so let's see what they look like in combat. Okay, so you can see our line upon line of troops here. Uh, as you can see, some are spawned in with... Uh... Oh, these are... Never mind, those are militia. I was going to say, that doesn't look right. Those are uh, from the local village I'm defending, so that's interesting. But let's see if we can't just command our pikemen. Yes, we can. So we're going to tell them to form up over there. I don't know. Infantry! I don't know. Well, they don't seem to want to do what I'm telling them to do. Attack! There we go. <laughs> Alright, let's just watch them do what it is they do. Unfortunately, we're going to have some Azurai uh, malicious spearmen in here screwing everything up, but... So, as you can see, they make pretty short work of... Uh, troops like this and that's pretty consistent in the game the pikemen are actually just really good in combat uh even without any cavalry or archer support um even better so if you use them in defensive formations and uh the enemies are attacking you because it's very very easy to uh you know overpower them in that sense so that was number two the vlandian pikemen let's move on to number one so here at number one we have another imperial troop taking the first place spot so here we have the imperial elite menavliaton 
think I'm saying that right, but probably not. Uh, so here they're very similar to the Legionary with a few small differences. A, the key thing being the long lance they have, and no shield. So you'll notice that a lot. So that's why, because they have two-handed pole arms, they're not rocking a shield. But that also makes them very strong. So here we have probably the best example of consistent heavy armor in these Spearman troops. So that's something that gave them a definite edge here. So let's check them out in the troop tree. So as you can see, they go down through the left to the Imperial Infantrymen, Trained Infantrymen, Manavliaton, and then the Elite Manavliaton. God, that just sounds wrong. I know I'm saying that wrong. But anyway, key stats for these ones are one-handed of 130, polearm of 130, and athletics of 130, giving them a balanced ATR, or average troop rate, of 130. So, makes sense. Uh, Imperials like to keep things consistent. So let's see how they look in combat. All right, so you can see our brave legionaries, our Manavliaton standing here. I'm not sure what the difference is there, but uh, very nice looking. So let's uh, Quidman, hear me. let's take them and go put them in a line right there. Uh, shield wall. Shield wall now. Oh, they don't have shields, so. Huh. Probably should have tried that with one that uses shields, but let's just watch what they do. So there you have it. That's number one. I know a lot of people don't like my Imperial-centric way of looking at things, and trust me, I'm not skewing it that way. The Imperial troops are just consistently very good. Uh, as far as the faction goes, oftentimes they don't have the best, but they've often got one of the best, and in the infantry department, they definitely win. Just because they're just such a, you know, strong, heavily armored equals stats they just they make very good troops so with all that in mind if you disagree with any of the points i've made in here think that things should be in a different order or think certain troops should be on this list or certain troops shouldn't be on this list you know whatever uh go ahead and drop that discussion down in the comments below so we can uh get a healthy discourse going on and uh, like i've uh, said in a lot of these videos i want them to serve as a guide for everyone so the more expert information we have the better so it's all around a win-win so uh with all that in mind i hope you like this video but in any case thanks for watching and have a nice day i'll see you next time thanks for watching another dare to game video if you like this video please leave a like and a comment if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like my content and would like to support this channel consider becoming a member today for as little as 1.99 a month it makes a huge difference but in any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.